And we're here for the fifth episode of OMG JK. I'm Jason Kincaid. And I'm MJ Siegler. So our first topic today is Facebook questions. It was a feature that everyone's known about for a few months now, but they finally started rolling it out to users. I think it's, they said something like 5% of the user base has access right now, and they're mm -hmm. going to be rolling it out over the next few months. Uh, so if you played around with it at all, what do you think so far? Yeah, I played with it around uh, briefly right when it came out in the past few days. You know, I've been answering questions about TechCrunch. People are asking specific questions about us. And nice it's questions, I assume. Right? Yeah, right. Everyone loves <laughs> uh, what's the best tech blog in the world? You know, uh, <laughs> those type of things. Uh, it is pretty cool, I think. I think it has a lot of potential, but I know that there's there's quite a few UI issues right now and stuff. You right. Have problems with that. So, yeah, no, I, I totally agree with the potential. I think the post I wrote, I said it has the potential to be massive. Right. Uh, but the UI at this point, well, I first logged in, and for one, I've got bugs where I can't see the questions, but also when I actually can <laughs> That's see the problem them, for the yeah, questions. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the navigation, I couldn't figure out how to get to the next question. It's because they have, there's a button at the top of the screen you have right, to hit. Right, the next question. It's just not really consistent with the rest of the Facebook experience. Yeah. But I think they'll work it out. Uh, more in the long term, though, I mean, how do you think this is going to do against, say, Yahoo Answers or, or Quora? Or Quora, which is, of course, made by ex-Facebook people who, right. who did that. Uh, Quora definitely seems a lot nicer right now. It seems much more polished, but they've been working on it, for, or it's been out at least for longer. I know they've been mm -hmm. working on the Facebook thing for a while. Uh, yeah, but I mean, the fact that these questions go right into the Facebook stream, and like that's where mm -hmm. I see them all the time. I mm -hmm. see like, oh, so and Jason answered a question about so and so, mm -hmm. and that you know that's pretty killer. I mean, so I, I think the the one differentiating factor at this point, you know, Facebook obviously has the massive built-in install base for the questions product. Quora doesn't, right. but Quora has them beat on on quality so far. Right. Do you think that's really going to matter in the long term? My my opinion is. You know, some people may turn to Quora if it really is that much better, mm -hmm. but most people are probably still going to use Facebook anyway. Well, the idea of Quora was always that it was so cool because it was so closed, like, and there weren't a lot of outside people in who could just fill it with bull bullshit answers, you know, about right. things. But now that they're starting to open it up more, is it going to be as, you know, as, as good as it once was originally? It's going to so. be hard to maintain that, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, the second topic we're going to talk about is the new Kindle. Uh, Amazon mm -hmm. just launched a new one. Um, they have a 3G version for, I think, 189 189 And then a Wi-Fi version for 139 So mm -hmm. that's a pretty nice price for this thing. Right. No, I, I think this makes it accessible to people who, who might buy it on a whim. Before now, I think it's been one of those purchases that you think about for a while. Do I really need this? Do I... This is more like you know, a nice birthday gift as opposed to something that's like a longer term investment in your reading. Right, but it, I mean, so, and Jeff Bezos, his Amazon CEO has come out and said, you know, he thinks that it might be ready to go mainstream now. You know, they've been yeah. talking about that it's been very successful, like Amazon's most successful product or whatever. But to, to that point, I mean, I know your stance is that the Kindle's going to die and the iPad is gonna kill it. Not necessarily the iPad, but I think okay. that all of these different tablets are eventually, and not right away, I think that Amazon was very smart in what they did with this price cut. I mean, they had to do it because they're mm. competitors. It's not so much in, uh, you know, in response to the iPad necessarily that it is price cuts. It's like the Nook. Sure. Uh, because they had to make it, you know, ten dollars cheaper than those, you know, because the Kindle when it first came out was three ninety nine or whatever, right. way too expensive. Luxury item for sure. At this price, it makes a lot more sense, and I think that it's gonna, you know, be successful for the next couple of years. But it's after the next couple of years when, I mean, tablets are, you know, more commonplace. So, but I mean, what's gonna be the turning point? To me, having used the Kindle and the iPad for reading, right. Kindle beats it hands down. It's just not even a contest. And I agree with that, but I still think that long term, you know, after two years from now or whatever... Well, I mean, do you think it's going to be a new screen technology that's going to drive that? I think I, if I, I had an iPad that had e-ink or yeah, no backlit display... I mean, I don't think... there. I don't, you know, e-ink is tricky because the, part of the problem is the refresh rate and all those other things and displaying graphics and, and that kind of stuff. I'm not sure if, I mean, I'm sure there'll be better screens in two years, you know, I don't know what kind of technology it'll be, mm -hmm. but I just think overall that there's like going to be just so much more you can do with these tablets that people will eventually, you know, just not care so much about the, the reading. See, I disagree there. on that point. I think people who enjoy reading books aren't yeah, going to shift their what attitude a, to But the idea which, of like people who enjoy it. reading books read actual tangible books, they don't no, read no, Kindles. Th that's definitely a good point, but... There are people who love reading books but don't necessarily have easy access to a bookstore right. at all times. I mean, the, right. the Kindle definitely affords a certain convenience to be able to download something in like 60 seconds. Right. And I think it's the trade-off for, for book lovers, if you want to put it that way, I think there are some who are willing to sacrifice the tangible book for the Kindle. I don't think they're willing to go to the iPad, though. Yeah, but do you think it's enough to make it a really big mainstream success? 
I think that it will be a success. I think it is already a moderate success, but the iPad's almost already outselling the I thing. Think if it's, it's not, I, I, I think, think it's it might apples be. to oranges. I think that's say, like saying, you know, laptops are, are better. Yeah, than yeah, yeah. But my Android. point is just that these tablets are going to keep selling like crazy, and everyone's going to have this functionality built into the tablet. I, I agree with that, but I don't think that means the Kindle is going to go down because of it. Not even in like two years? I don't think for you I know, think, a few, I think for the, a while. the growth rate of the iPad may well be faster than the Kindle, but I don't think the Kindle is going to trend downward because of that. So you think all things will rise? I, th I think these two will both rise. All right. Okay, next topic. Uh, Apple Magic Trackpad. I believe you said that the mouse is dead. Right. So the Kindle's <laughs> dead, and now the mouse is dead. You just like saying the books are dead. dead. Everything's dead. Uh, kill, kill, kill. We should just call you the Undertaker. <laughs> I like that, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, so the Magic Trackpad. So full you know, disclaimer here. I haven't used the thing yet, oh, okay. but I'm talking about it from the perspective that I love using the trackpad on my, on my notebook, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on the MacBook, which is essentially the same thing, though a little bit smaller. The Magic Trackpad is 80% larger or whatever than mm -hmm. the trackpads on the newest version of the MacBooks. Um, I love using that thing so much more than a mouse. It's really? just like with the, with the four finger swipe down, you know, that launches Expose and like all well, what those about, different what about the, so I've got the Magic Mouse. I was a right. doubter of the Magic Mouse when it first came out. Right. And I really, really like having the multi touch yeah. built on there. But why why would the trackpad be better than the, the Magic Mouse? Because you have the best of both worlds with that, don't you? Yeah, okay, so I like the Magic Mouse too, and I have one, and it's great. It's still like a little bit too uh, dumbed down version of multi touch, though. You can't do everything. You can do swipe back and forth, which is nice, but they mm -hmm. don't have like four finger, you know, up and down. Like, I, I'm a full multi touch. He's user. a big multi toucher. I, <laughs> exactly. I love of all that functionality and especially now that we're so used to it with the with Android phones and iPhones and iPads mm -hmm. you know all this different multi-touch functionality imagine what they can you know it's not just the functionality that it has right now it's what they can do in the future with it you know they can build apps that are just used for you know pinch to zoom and things like that I I don't think you're wrong in that I think there's definitely gonna be a big audience for people using trackpads instead of the mouse but I think the mouse still has a place for a while the mouse has a place for a while and so I just, it's not dead I wasn't saying that it was dying right now, but I mean, it's... it's well, all this stuff is going to be dead it's eventually. It's stupid to think, yeah, that it's not going to die eventually, but that oh, was sure. my point. I mean, okay. but this is, go this is kind of heralding that the end of the mouse era, I think. It's not going to die tomorrow, but I think that eventually, you know, this plays into the idea that everything is moving towards touch. Mm -hmm. Because this is really touch uh, coming upon the, the desktop I, I for the want first the time stuff in a major way. Touch. I want the holograms or whatever. Right, and that will come along and kill touch eventually. Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, last story. The Android wallpaper of doom. <laughs> I, I don't know what else to call it. Um, so apparently a security firm discovered that the wallpaper was sending sensitive data to China. Right. What's your take? Uh, that deal? Yeah, so this was at the, the Black Hat conference, right? Black That's, Hat conference. Uh, okay, so yeah, this, this app supposedly, which is for the Android, which is for Androids only, right. was sending text messages, but that turned out not to be true. Right. So Basically, the like, press screwed up big time. Yeah, but there still is something to this. I mean, it's it's not good that it's sending back phone numbers, that's, certainly. And they said that that was definitely happening, right? right. No, I, I mean, I think that's certainly the case. I do think one part of this that I think people try to turn this into a sort of platform more, like, ooh, right. Android is inherently insecure because this application says... The same thing could have happened with an iPhone, though, couldn't it? Well, I, Apple does it? not screen the code of every application. That's why... Well, they screen what it does... You know, just they run it through and try and see what it does. Yeah, but I, I think if a developer really wanted to get past that, they could, for example, the flashlight application yeah, right, right. that was Putting used for tethering. tethering. Right. I think these, especially Apple's, I think Apple's mentality may be even less secure than Google's because with Google, you may be taught you have to look it up for your own security, whereas with Apple, you kind of assume that they checked it for you. <laughs> I don't, I don't think... Yeah, okay, I, a, I, that's, that's a fair point on some level. But, but it's I, wrong. Well, <laughs> it, it's just that, I mean, most, you know, we're thinking about this as two, you know, kind of tech geeks and stuff. Sure. It's like most people aren't even thinking about that at yeah, all. Yeah, it's mean, very, there, definitely there's, true. There's no, there's no element of security that comes into their mind. They're just using these apps. They don't right. like, oh, what the hell's going I on? I mean, to that point, Android's permission, or Android's permission system where you just hit, like, okay, basically, right. I think... <laughs> I don't think that's going to work in the long term. Either. Google has a kill switch, though, for they do. right, and so does Apple. Apple hasn't used it yet, I don't think, but I don't, uh, I don't think I, don't know I think Google, Google has it at one point. One too. point, yeah. Um, so that's it's interesting that they can both do that, and that's a pretty good feature to have, right. even though it kind of sounds scary or whatever. But I don't know. This still seems like a pretty bad, you know. It's it's not good. Yeah. Definitely, I just don't think it should be positioned as a a 
weapon in the platform war. What's, it, what's kind of interesting, though, is that, you know, this is a fairly big deal. We both agree about that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously the iPhone 4 antenna issue was a pretty big deal. But so, that was, like, blown out of proportion so, so to you, the extreme. You, you think and this only, is, like, only fair for wallpaper gate. <laughs> yes, we need to have a press conference. Press conference. We need free bumpers for the wallpaper <laughs> gate. And, uh, no, tinfoil hats for your phone so you can make sure no data is being sent. Right. Like we a, little, need... a mini Faraday cage that you just wrap your phone in. <laughs> yes, to, to be able to make sure that nothing's getting sent to China. Awesome. All right. Uh, I think that does it for this episode of OMG JK. Make sure to subscribe to us on iTunes or through RSS, and we'll see you guys next week. Thanks.